I'll welcome everyone to a conversation with David Hodgson, one of our featured wayfinders for the Bioregional Regeneration Summit. Um, and I want to say at the outset, you know, we're all wayfinders here. So we're here to listen to David, who's got many years of experience and has been finding his own way and, and certainly creating spaces for many others to find their way. And at the same time, um, this summit is all about creating the space for each of us to step into whatever roles we want to fulfill, to bring our gifts forward, the ones especially that we somehow haven't had the, the, the context yet to, um, uh, to offer. And while we may not complete that in these two weeks, maybe we're planting the seeds, we're, we're creating the, the fertile soil or a little bit more fertile soil uh, for that to happen. And that'll be part of what, what David will hopefully do for us is, is nourish some of that soil and maybe plant some ideas and some inspiration. Um, it's part of the, the context that we're declaring exists for this summit, let's say is that there's a, there's a readiness right now in the, in the field that these ideas of bioregionalism um, and regeneration have reached a level where there's, there's some kind of critical mass. If we were a mycelium, we might be ready to produce a lot of mushrooms because we've got the resources and the, and the, and the water and all that. And, 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 and you'd look at the forest floor and you'd say, wow, we, we're, we're, you know, nothing's going on. Right. And then overnight things happen and, and maybe we're at that stage. We don't know. I don't think we have the capacity to really sense the whole field so thoroughly, although people like David may, may be in a position to do certainly more sensing than, than, uh, than, than I can in, in, in certain domains that I'm looking forward to hearing him talk about. Um, but that's really the context. You know, we have a um, so we're, we're interested really in, in what's possible now and what opportunities are emerging. Uh, I think many of us have been, you know, are aware of the, the challenges that we face, of how much is going wrong, of the crises, and why that might be, and what we might wish would be happening instead. So we have a lot of opinions, we have, have theories of change, we have plans, but more than all, and, and that's fine to bring all that in here too. Um, what we're looking for, I think, particularly in, as, as the Regenerative Communities Network, are opportunities, though, that are ready to be explored where things can manifest. Um, and so with that, I think we'll move into our, our conversation with David, and I will um, spotlight myself and him. So we've got two questions, David, um, or prompts for you as... Uh, as part of this, and, and mostly it's just you taking it where you want it to go. Um, but then we'll also open it up for questions from the group um, about halfway through. So maybe you'll be talking for about 20 minutes or so, um, and then we'll go into the, the Q&A, and then we'll, we'll maybe close the, the formal Wayfinder conversation portion, and, and whatever wants to happen after that can happen. Um, so the first question, maybe take five minutes or so for this one, um, comes out of the, the appreciative inquiry space that, that I've found to be quite valuable, where you always start with appreciative interviews. And the first thing in those interviews is a story of something that's already happened, of a high point, of something that worked really well, because we wanna build on what's already working well, um, not start from the problems and what's broken even though there's a place for talking about that and dealing with that, but a high point of high experience. So when you think about our core theme here of radical collaboration in service to bioregional re regeneration, does, is there a specific story, a short story that you might tell of something that somehow captures the essence of what's possible, you know, that was a real high point experience for you that you might tell us about? Uh. <laughs> Um, oh, I need to think about uh, that. Um, radical, uh, a thing that has uh, happened. Well, so, um, yeah, I guess we're just coming up on the three-year anniversary of the Global Regeneration Collab. Uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. so there's a few, uh, uh, Arlene is a, is a member, and I don't know if anyone else is. Um, and from a radical collaboration type perspective, that's uh, 
uh, has surpassed all my hopes when I set it up. Um, I mean, there's 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 nominally uh, the Global Regeneration Collab, uh, grc.earth is the URL. Um, and we've got, so I've got a very large, I collect interesting people working on regeneration. <laughs> it's one very strange <laughs> way of putting what I do. I, know, um, I didn't introduce you, I'm realizing, but that would be as good an introduction as any for, for David. <laughs> um, and I'm, so I'm a, a compulsive network weaver in the regeneration space, but mm -hmm. uh, as a result, uh, I keep having to, dis trying to figure out ways to disintermediate myself so that people can self-weave uh, within their network. So set up this thing called the Global Regeneration Collab. Um, there's a thousand people in it now, but that doesn't, you know, lots of people come in, show up for several calls, meet other people, and then go off and uh, end up, yeah, collaborating with those people. Um, and yeah, there's been some amazingly transformative stories, uh, yeah, of people who came in, you know, vaguely, I guess, you know, interested enough in the subject, but, you know, working in much more conventional areas. And then, uh, yeah, here they are three years later, totally dedicated to the cause. <laughs> does, does one stand out, one of those stories, maybe? Uh, Tammy, Tammy Tullis. Uh, so, her background was uh, sovereign bonds on the buy side. So she's, you know, finance, high finance background. I did that once upon a time. <laughs> uh, and yeah, now she's working with, well, eco agriculture partners on 1000 oh, yeah. landscapes. Uh -huh. She's doing, yeah, work with the World Bank earlier this year around a, yeah, a regenerative fund for sub Saharan Africa. Uh, yeah, and, and you know the first conversations when she joined, it was just like, oh, we'll never get inv investors. Uh, I have no idea how to package up regeneration and make it attractive to investors. And here we are three years later. And uh, I mean, that's the general thing that I'm seeing is, yeah, the, the rise of regenerative investment and regenerative finance is, it's really blowing up right now. Yeah. Well, that, that goes straight into the our main question for, for these conversations, which is the calling question for the whole summit, um, you know, which is what, what opportunities are emerging for, for radical collaboration in service to bioregional regeneration? So we've heard a little bit about a past highlight. That was perfect. And, and yeah, say more about what's on the horizon, including your, your own work, perhaps, with the rainforest. Um, but also patterns and, and what, what, what are you seeing as a, as a scout? Uh, so uh, is, is a, a North Star transition participating in this uh, summit at all, Ben, Jyoti Banerjee? I don't think so. We could look on our, I haven't tracked, you know, all oh, we're over 800. I'll tell uh, 160 organizational partners now. I could look so, on the map, but but we won't right now. Yeah. He should, he should they're be. not prominent. If they're here, they've yeah. been quiet. So they they've got this is an entity that's based in the UK. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was talking to Jyoti this morning, and uh they started off this thing called the Wales Transition Lab. Right. Now oh, yes, yes, yes. Bill Bowie was telling us about them. them. We reached out to them, we invited them. Um, but it was kind of last minute. Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. no, that's cool. Uh, and through the and so they're looking, you know, the 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 call, you know, they're acting as a convener, bringing together people from across land use, food, and health systems mm -hmm. across mm -hmm. the country of Wales and or you know, sub country of Scotland, I guess, sub country of Wales, depending how we define country. Um, and with it, and you know, they've been convening these groups and starting to catalyze all this activity. One of the projects that's emerged uh, is the restoration of the Y River watershed. Um, and there's another similar project emerging with a utility in the southeast of England called um, 
uh, yeah, I can't remember, is it Thames Water? It's not Thames Water, but one of the other utility companies. And both of around, they're building a new reservoir in that case. And then Jyoti and North Star Transition, and they came to them going, oh, how would we support, you know, regeneration around this gray infrastructure we're building? Um, and they, in both cases, they're looking at regener basically regenerative initiatives in the billion dollar range with large institutional investors interested in participating. AXA is one of those, and I don't know the name of one of the other ones. Mm. So they're having serious conversations about large scale watershed restoration right. at the billion dollar level. Right. And I'm seeing other things happening, but nothing quite, you know, that's the, the largest scale most, <laughs> and at some level that was also born out of the out of GRC uh Jyoti was invited into GRC a few years back wasn't really in the regeneration discourse got really excited about it all through meeting with a few other people in the GRC and went back off and now and and the world soil program they're partnering with the world soil program I think it is and exploring something similar in Kenya um but then yeah there's um yeah uh, another fund that I'm aware of up in Canada um which is also taking a similar watershed restoration approach that in that case that was funded by a single family office um but they're taking a very diversified perspective on the kinds of interventions that need to be uh invested in uh you know from they're not seeking any kind of conventional fund re return on that much more of a blended capital kind of thing mm -hmm. um Do yeah, you want to say a bit about blended capital and maybe not everybody knows what that refers to uh, uh blended capital is where yeah you, you know you've got you've got a pool of cap most investment pools of capital have a very fixed thesis and you know or, or they're going to make a single kind of investment uh, over and over again within a blended capital structure you're making you know some grants to nonprofits to do field building activity or market development activity maybe issuing some kind of debt thing too to support you know smaller businesses that just need you know lines of credit and whatever else plus making VC style investments uh, and real estate type investments. So it's, you know, bringing together the full spectrum of capital allocation in a kind of a systemic way. We have a case study in that uh, coming up on Friday with um, the Dishkama project that the Weot tribe is doing in Humboldt County, California. Um, ooh, flag that. Um, yeah. Was it, was it the, um, uh, Deshkan, the the, the 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 Canadian project you referred to was that Deshkan ZB? Is that a different one? That's in the Carolinian area. That's, that's another. Is, I can look up, but I saw somebody ask what the name of it was. It is Sasha Investments. S A C H A Investments. And it was you know after the after the flood the ridiculous flooding in BC last year that cut off all of their infrastructure. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> all the major transportation infrastructure uh they yeah there's sudden yeah <laughs> from relocal relocalization would be a <laughs> would be a very resilient idea uh so let's invest in a relike relocalized food infrastructure um and the city of guelph actually uh i talked to somebody at the city of guelph who's been running their food shed systems food shed systems transformation initiatives um which I assume has a very similar uh, underpinning, right? Uh, yeah, and they pulled together. They've got they've got a very interesting model. So yeah, they, <clears throat> I guess what I'm yeah the my overall, you know, five years ago, I wasn't seeing projects like this, <clears throat> and now I'm seeing yeah. <laughs> Lots, lots of yeah, lots of them of this. Five years ago, the dialogue 
or the projects I was seeing were not what you would call bank. People hadn't figured out the finance piece and they were more community initiated things. Mm -hmm. And now it's not, it's being, I don't know if professionalization is the right word, but figuring out how to do that interface between what the capital needs to see and, but still with the kind of the bottom up grassroots, you know, food system transformation and all of the implications that go, you know, right. Of, yeah, that, that gap seems to have been, you know, the, the bridges are being, have been built now. And, and that's something you're also exploring in, in your own latest project, right? Uh, yes. Um, the, yeah. <laughs> We're setting up this thing called the the rainforest, um, which uh, is, uh, you know, because I have this lot, I've gathered this large network of people focused on how to, you know, how how to how to do this. Um, yeah, we're you know, I'm pull I'm pulling them together into a a network uh yeah it, it it into i don't know if a consulting network is the right way to frame it it's uh it's a network of people who can can swarm together around different bioregional regeneration initiatives to support their development um and to accelerate their development and access to capital and yeah all of the different skill sets needed um yeah to, to execute or to to deliver on these things yeah can you give us an example of of a dream project um something that's in the near term maybe you know as, as this grows and develops but that, that might happen within i don't know what the right time frame is a year or two three what do you how long does it take to put something that complex together do you think or are we getting to the point where things can pop up more readily than than we might expect? I, that's one of my concerns is that, particularly when it comes to investment money, you know, to have robust infrastructure that investors can rely on to be there ten years from now. So even if they're willing to take their return in a non-extractive way on the back end, there's some entity that exists that can provide it to them. Or, you know, so what's how, what's the what's how quickly might things happen? And what's an example of something juicy that you'd love to see? even if it's hypothetical my my current experience <clears throat> is that uh things can happen more quickly than we uh than we think um, yeah which is the the joy of uh uh networks um because th that's the other part what i'm saying is that uh yeah uh, you know it's not about one organization building the capacity right it's about having the capacity within the ecosystem and there's right. a lot of people just like us who are inside now in positions of authority <clears throat> i've i seem to have discovered yeah across a very broad range of kind of institutional like sleeper cells right <laughs> or or some kind of fungal yeah. uh, parasite within the, the business as usual world yeah the... <laughs> sleeper cell I'm sure ima imaginal cells maybe more than sleeper oh, there cell. we go that's a that's a more positive metaphor isn't it <laughs> yes yeah uh and you know another call I was on this morning yeah I mean for for instance we I my friends over at common earth have a a fund uh sitting in the Cayman Islands uh it's a complex <laughs> It's a complex story, but Common Earth are mandated by the Commonwealth to promote regenerative development across the Commonwealth. Um, they've got an initial project underway in Dominica, uh, in the Caribbean, um, but they're also talking to other, uh, yeah, kind of small island developing states and whatever else. Um, and, you know, the reason they've got this fund sitting there is to uh to fund the funds so you can you know spin up a fund here that's okay this fund is focused on dominica or this fund is focused on whatever um and they've been building out 
a very interesting set of partnerships around that too. So, uh, and yeah, we're working, yeah, we'll be working with them to kind of provide the, coordinate the network capacity to support their set of projects. And we're looking at, uh, yeah, so within six months, I'm guessing, uh, yeah, I mean, the Dominica thing is well underway. Um, and yeah, we're looking to go kind of live or whatever the right metaphor with that. Um, yeah, in the middle of next year, I'm guessing. Beautiful. Well, what we heard last night from Helena Norberg Hodge, who's um, quite skeptical about the corporate world's capacity to, to be a regenerative force, although also believes that there are plenty of people of goodwill and, and um, you know, that it's not about blame. But if we're not, if for people who aren't playing at that level, um, where do you see opportunities for them? You know, so we hear about, wow, there's a billion dollar project going on and we're glad that's happening. But I think many people who might be listening to this right now or, or as a recording um, are working in, in, at smaller scales at different levels. And part of the whole theory of change, I think I'm hearing you name and certainly that many others name is, and Helena would as well, is that the local scale is where regeneration really needs to happen, where we have that deep rooted context in the land, in the culture, um, in the history. Uh, and and that we're trying to use these bioregional structures as a way to, to bridge from the global to the local. So do you see what's for someone that's playing at, at the more local level, whether that's literally in a place or, or even more sort of just systemically and metaphorically, that they have some small part that they might offer into an ecosystem that's emerging in a, you know, do you, what do you see as a way for, for people to plug in without being the kind of folks that move billions of dollars? Uh it's the the uh uh what is it uh, in the resilience thinking stuff right cross cross scalar um yeah linking in systems linking, I mean, yeah. you know yeah. we need we need people working at all different <laughs> we need people everywhere uh um we have them yeah and the trick is in the yeah connecting them uh, you know support mm -hmm. engage yeah engage, i mean it's like the um the the regenerative communities network right having all of these local community networks working on that kind of transformation but then knowing that this other you know realm of activity is happening too and that you know there's a way to bridge into it right um so yeah it's just uh yeah it's in in the dominica example you know if, if there's just an individual let's say who who wants to do you know take a piece of, of degraded land and and do some permaculture work there to, to turn it into a food forest and needs funding to do that and there's a 10-year horizon or maybe a you know for that to really be productive land where it might theoretically produce a surplus uh enough to you know to not only sustain that person but um, and contribute to the community, but maybe even provide a return back to investors. Um, is, is there a, is that part, what's, is it, is there something in the model where that person comes to this initiative or that the initiative is reaching out with its sensing tendrils to, 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 to hear from and find people like that and, and be guided by their, their sense of where money should flow? Uh, the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the simple answer to that question is yes. Um, uh, the, the longer answer is in all, or not all necessarily, but uh, yeah, the, 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 there's, there's, there's sufficient concern that I'm seeing uh, around the ideas of community uh, yeah ensuring these financing structures that are getting put into place are strongly in favor of uh community sovereignty um and that the structures there are sort of if yeah financing structures that are put in place at that level are looking to actively support um yeah that the kind of activity that you describe on the ground wherever it is so you know along the lines of 
community, you know, uh, I see I see the the entities that exist in a specific place as looking very much like kind of community development finance organizations, right? CDFIs, institutions mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that are, you know, mandated to support the well-being of those yeah the communities right but it's but not not being external actors that are coming oh, in their theory of change so much oh, yeah. yeah and well even in this I, I guess to push it one step farther and then let's take some questions people could start putting those in the chat too but um you know, in the CDFI models, I understand it, right? Um, this is in the United States. Um, they're making, for example, classically very low interest loans to um, small businesses, and they're providing capacity building support to them in an area that's that's you know been underserved, underinvested by by the market. There's there's still an underwriting process where those people have people have to apply for those loans, and the CDFI has some kind of you know investment board that's taking those applications and deciding in the actual allocation authority resides with the people that hold the money. And I guess to me, you know, are you seeing a move at all to you talk about the community being sovereign to actually move the authority for allocating money down to the level of the people that are going to use the money to some degree, as opposed to this, this other layer of, of financial management? Uh, yeah, yes. I mean, that, uh, so, uh, yeah, well, there's a, there's a lot of activity on that end of things uh, that is tied to the world of <laughs> tied to the world of blockchain, um, mm -hmm. right? Right. Decentralizing governance of uh, community assets, uh, and I know of similar initiatives. Yeah, uh, uh, and there's some really interesting stuff happening right. around that in Papua right. New Guinea. Uh, is one example I'm aware of. Um, and the whole, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, have I seen that? Uh, it's a good, uh, beyond the, I'm seeing lots of conversations, I'm seeing lots of conversations uh, around how to decentralize government. Well, the most, uh, I'm, I'm, the, the, the Amazon, I mean, the Amazon sacred headwaters thing is the most interesting example, I think, high profile yeah, example of we'll that. We'll be hearing from them during the summit. Yeah. yeah, which is, you know, very much a community, community originated agenda, you know, investment agenda that is then going, okay, now how do we put capital through that? That, gov you know, that's my ideal kind of governance if we could replicate that governance structure um, across bioregional funds everywhere, that's basically, yeah, how the capital, you know, capital should, the decision-making for capital allocation should, ex, you know, should exist within the community itself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you for giving us that scan of things and um, for telling us about your new initiative. We're getting, uh, we had a few comment questions come in earlier when I invite people to put some more into the chat. Why don't I just read what I see here as a set and let you kind of go where you will with them rather than having you answer them one at a time. Um, so one question we had is uh, on regarding blended capital, where might we find pro forma templates to develop a funding strategy for our bioregional regeneration projects? Is there some actual specific set of resources for that is one question. Another one is simply, how can there be non a non-extractive return on an, um, presumably on an investment? I think that came after I said those words. Um, and maybe that's, we're waiting for more questions, but why don't you start with those two? uh on the pro <clears throat> the one thing i know of on the pro forma templates or the closest thing i know on the pro forma templates side is uh probably some of the work kicking around uh in the eco agriculture partners orbit um thousand landscapes yeah uh 
And we'll I'm, hear from them on Friday. Yeah, I think that's that's something they're interested in and have been working on with Common Land and various others. Um, and what is, is it, it also called? the case maybe that you know just like biodiversity and the whole concept of bioregions being distinct from one another and therefore you know what works in one place isn't a template that you model everywhere else should we expect really that there might not be templates as much as perhaps patterns that that show up in different configurations uh that is <laughs> As a, as a software engineer, uh, a former software engineer, uh, <laughs> the, that is a hazardous question uh, to ask. Um, uh, you know, cause it, it depends on what you mean by a template. Right. Uh, in my brain, templates are very flexible and adaptive things. They're not rigid structures, right? They're out, they're frameworks, they're outlines, of how you, mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, basically are asking, a set of questions that then you know gets filled in based on the uh uh desires of the community um or desire needs want you know, whatever Fair so, enough. Uh, <laughs> uh we definitely do not want uh rigid uh the rigidity of, of things has been uh, a lot of the uh, historic problems um right works for an industrial approach, but not for regenerative. Yeah. How about this question about a non-extractive return? Do you have a, a short answer on that? Uh, <laughs> you, uh, a short answer. Um, or a long one. <laughs> uh, it would be worth, uh, it is a, it is a very, um, interesting question uh at some at some uh, my my answer to that i guess is uh in 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 any human endeavor uh there is going to be the um well in any in any as long as we assume the money of some description some medium of exchange exists and humans get together in groups and engage in uh, productive behavior, then money, you know, money is going to be uh, accumulating and moving around in a variety of ways. Uh, and, you know, the, the problem right now is that capital is hyper, is, is expectations around capital are hyper extractive. Um, but it, you know, if you if you give, and this is kind of what the uh, and so I guess RSF, the Rudolf Steiner Foundation, is mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. um, the way they've approached this is, you know, every year the uh, providers of capital get together with the uh, investees in that particular portfolio, and they basically have a discussion around what is an appropriate uh, return on the capital that was invested, a non-extractive return, what feels, you know, what's a non-extractive return? It's just another seat at the, you know, if money is moving around, the capital that is enabling that activity is just another seat at the table in the dialogue of what is, you know, how, sh how should everybody who has been contributing in a reciprocal relationship how is everybody who is contributing receiving something in return, you know, something in return? Two more questions that have come in. One is um, where might participatory budgeting fit in here rather than relying on capital financing? And that's so that's often government money that's allocated with that process. And I think it's important to think about both philanthropy, you know, investment of all stripes, but also government funding as, as part of the mix. And then another question about um, uh, whether you're familiar with the things like co-budget and open collective, which you are, I think GRC uses them. And how would you compare that to the approach being used by Amazon Sacred Headwaters um, in terms of a, a desirable tool for 
co-regulation, collective management of, of financial of financial pool. Um, and maybe there's one more question here, um, which is, first, you're being thanked for all the capital you're moving towards regeneration. But what about metabolism as a self-regulatory process to better understand how to keep the planet healthy? Are you using some patterns from nature in your governance processes? Uh, <laughs> that's a great question. Um, uh so yeah co-budget is i've uh i've been inspired by uh co-budget uh for a while um and the ability yeah the ability for groups to uh pull pull capital and then uh yeah kind of co-decide how most effectively to allocate it which i mean is entirely analogous to the um okay. The Amazon Sacred Headwaters instance, just uh, operating at a, a, a different scale of um, capital, create it, you know, extend. And this is where you get into the world of, again, back into the world of blockchain and right. DAOs, which are also about collective governance, uh, effective collective governance of shared pools of capital, where, you know, anyone submits a proposal to a DAO. Everyone who's a token holder votes on whether capital gets allocated to that thing. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of interesting activity in that space. Exactly how to, you know, go from, you know, how how to use that to, let's say, allocate. I don't know how much money is that Amazon Sacred Headwaters are. Uh, seeking i think it's in the 100 million ish plus range um yeah so how to effectively utilize uh tools that have been built to deal with you know five thousand dollar ten thousand dollar whatever transactions versus 20 million dollar <laughs> transactions and what the capital providers you know, need to see from a, uh, yeah, you know, a trust in the, you know, sort of a trust in the governance process, because when you, you need a lot, you need to show a lot more, the, the bigger the pool of money, <laughs> the, the more trust uh, in, in the system, in the governance of that capital needs to exist. Um, yeah, so exactly how, uh, yeah, how to put those two things together is a really interesting area of inquiry, I think. Um, you think that the natural patterns that there was that was that other question, does that maybe provide some insight into how to do that for you or? Well, going, I, I, I liked your, uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't know how um, my, uh, I mean, how mycelium are fascinating, right, in terms of what they do is they move nourishment from ac across the the ecosystem um across the you know the, the floral ecosystem um and i'm assu i assume they're dynamically routing stuff to oh this tree over here is signaling this thing right okay we need to route some more sugars or whatever it is over in that direction um to ensure the you know because they're trying to optimize try, yeah they've evolved to optimize the health of the ecosystem i'm assuming right so yeah i would the guess well, forest has evolved to do it is what they're is what I'm, I'm coming to understand so it's not that the mycelium are acting independently from the trees that they're connected to right it's it's all functioning as a super organism yeah, yeah so that kind of super organism model oh, yeah i mean that, that's how we need to be and actually that's it's kind of why I, um, I like the blockchain space. Mm -hmm. I've been in two minds about it, but the the ability because it is like a uh, it's a it's a rapidly evolving super organism of some kind that's you know constantly connecting together and figuring out new ways to route capital or whatever into regenerative activity wherever it may 
or the 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 potential of it is to dynamically is to operate in a fashion that's far more biomimetic yeah Um, we had a follow up on, on your comment about how greater levels of trust are required, the larger the amounts of money um, around, well, what, 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 the, what might we do to support that trust emerging um, in, you know, among those folks with, with their with the authority to allocate billions of dollars. And as you were saying it, it even occurred to me, well, you know, why does that have to be true? If, if you know, if you've got somebody like, like um, it's Bezos' ex-wife, right? That, that inherited all this money and she couldn't, she, she can't, well, before the stock market went down anyway, she couldn't give it away fast enough to actually reduce the amount of money she had to give away. She set herself a goal of giving away, but because it was all invested, you know, so, so how, if you're at that level where you you have billions to give away, why are you different from the person who you know is is just giving away thousands of dollars that that you know maybe they could use, but but they're generous. Um, you know why are there different dynamics and and what could address that so that we see the billions being given away perhaps you know based on a trust in a in a in a possibility. Because I think that's part of the problem, right? The investment world has been organized to say risk and return have to correlate. And if something's super risky because we don't know how it's going to turn out, well, we should damn well get a better return. And, and can we fund the regeneration we need by letting go of that and saying, well, look, you know, actually, we just need, you know, to invest in this stuff and maybe it won't work, but we got to move the money. It can't just sit there in a, you know, in the stock market growing um, or shrinking even as it, as it may well do. And if our global ecosystem collapses, it'll take the financial system down with it. So you're not exactly safe with your money there anyway. Right. So I'm preaching, but, but I don't know, does any of this make sense to you? Uh, this question of the try, it, try, it frustrates me to sort of say, yeah, if you're going to in, invest or give away money that you don't actually need, right? Nobody needs a billion dollars. Why is the hurdle so damn high? And is that maybe going to change? <laughs> that is a really interesting question. Um, it, uh, well, that. <laughs> yeah let's let's figure let's figure out how to uh make that happen um we have uh i be I, be I believe we may have uh, a pathway or two to mackenzie scott um <laughs> so we you know there's a there's a there's an interesting proposal to be put together around exactly what you yeah i, I really like what you just said um and what I'm just imagining, yeah. Uh, here is this mycelial, you know, because it is put this money in the mycelial network. The mycelial network will self-govern and route that capital appropriately. Uh, to you know, uh, flood it with a billion dollars right away, you know, that might create some erosion in the water metaphor. But if you commit to doing it and and start processes that can develop that network. Right and say the money's there as as like the trees are calling for the nutrients through the mycelium, right? But, uh, yeah, don't, yeah. The, the leaves don't they release some kind of chemicals that then uh, cause uh, <laughs> water droplets to um, condense and fall? Right. Um, I see that Donna Nellum wants to chime in. We could. We could wrap up maybe this part of the conversation with you if you have any sort of closing reflections or words. Um, and then for anyone that wants to stick around, um, we can turn this into an, an open dialogue in, in a couple of different ways, maybe. Um, cool. Uh, uh, closing thoughts. Um, <laughs> uh, Let me give you a prompt. Would you like one or are you good? I mean, the, the main the the main the main summary i guess is this uh there's a lot of converging but, but it feels to me like the whole system is coming into uh a different kind a new kind of alignment the, the start the stars are aligning in a certain way um 
because everybody's been doing such amazing <laughs> work uh, over the last uh, 20 years. Uh, um, so lots of things that we have historically had, pro uh, I mean, on the funding side, right, where it's, it's I mean, everybody I know, it's been a slog uh, raising capital. It doesn't mean that that's necessarily, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not that it becomes trivial, but um, it does look like the stars are aligning in a what yeah in a in a in a way that uh i would not have expected four or five years ago yeah right. well thank you so much david for um for sharing your reflections and and what you're noticing and and uh, uh spending this time with us i'm gonna maybe uh Trying to think, I see Donna's got her hand up. Why don't we see hands? How many people have have a a comment? I'm I'm wondering how to frame this too. Um, so we have about twenty people here. I'm seeing stuff flying by in the chat. Um, I'd love to hear briefly from Donna and also from Jenny Anderson, who's another of our wayfinders. Um, you know what 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 do you if you have something the two of you maybe let's just give give you each a, a couple minutes perhaps to say something and then we'll open it up to to some more but let's why don't we bring you up here donna cool and, and what's we'll... your what's your timing like david do you want us to do, do you have a little more time uh i mean i've got i'm gonna bring jenny into i need to drop uh towards the top of the hour but... all right so we got a few minutes i'm gonna bring donna and jenny in about that and, you, and with that I... jenny <laughs> I have no need to kick this off. Jenny, I'd, I'd love to hear, um, delighted to be with you here in this room. And so if you want to speak first, that's cool. Um, I just like the idea of kind of opening this up around some of the things that we're observing from this conversation. Jenny? Yeah, yeah, you, you go, Donna, because regretfully, much as I'd like to contribute, I have a Zoom to go to in about six minutes time. So uh, <laughs> I, I get into something, then okay. I'm just going to have to like, quit halfway. You want to okay. give us one minute, Jenny, before you go? <laughs> I'll, come, I'll come back for another one, but it's been great to, oh, okay. it's been great to listen to you, okay. uh, uh, David. It's fantastic to hear all of the bigger projects going on in the world, one of which is on my doorstep here. Okay, um, certainly look forward to seeing you in other places, uh, Jenny and others. Um, don't know too many of the people here. Um, it's, I'm just gonna make a, a bit of an observation, maybe open up some stuff that I'm, you know, that I'm observing. I mean, the discussion here has been touching on several, in, you know, no surprise, interconnected, needs, challenges, issues, everything from, you know, regenerative living system principles and how do we, you know, bring these kinds of initiatives into the world in ways that are aligned, um, issues to do with funding, um, traditional ways of funding, and isn't it time to move on to some new ways of doing this, um, issues of governance, which are very connected, trust, which is at the bedrock of all of this kind of stuff in the world that we're in, community, um, enabling technology, for example, blockchain. And, you know, some of this to me is speaking to the, you know, how do we live in the world that we live in, uh, transcend that old kind of economic paradigm, celebrate some of the good work that is obviously being done around the world, but how do we accelerate some of those things? And which is what I think the theme of this whole um, two weeks is, is collaboratively, how do we really build on some good things that are going on um, and then kind of take it to the next level. What are some of those breakthroughs? And there's a number of people that are attending through the course of the two weeks that have a particular uh, perspective that they can bring, but to cut through it all, nobody has the definitive answers to all this stuff, to, to move this to the, to the next level. And this is so incredibly important. And it's also one of the issues that I think happens when we come into these rooms that are sort of set up with anybody sort of having the being asked the questions and where there isn't a hard answer to that stuff. So no, no one of us ought to be set up to have the answers. It's like, there's some wonderful networking going on. So I'm already a long winded way of saying too much here, but trying to open it up to some conversation. And yeah, I mean, as institution, we've got some, uh, we're all about collaboration. Um, 
And that's very much in the interest in the heartland of why I'm here uh, is to look for ways that we can um, uh, really step up the collaboration across bioregional areas, honoring the great work that's being done, not looking for cookie cutter kinds of approaches. Um, and I can speak, and at some point I will, more about this kind of stuff through the course of the, um, of the sessions, but I really am here to listen and learn as well before I start, you know, spouting out a bunch, a bunch of stuff around that. That's really what I want to kind of open up into this conversation here, because we're, we're looking, I think we're all looking for breakthroughs that builds on the good work and then says, okay, how do we start to collaborate more amongst us? Um, recognizing there's limited bandwidth, um, there's good work being done. It's not that any, there's any one right way to do it, but there's some ways that are more right than others <laughs> for sure. And there's some lessons that have been learned. And I'm going to stop talking at this point because it starts to feel like I'm dominating and I sure as heck don't want to be doing that. So I'll stop there and I can come back in at some other point. Do you want to reflect back on any of that, David, before we wrap? No, we're good. All right. Uh, good summary. Uh, oh, good. <laughs> uh, call to action. Uh, <laughs> thank you, David. Thank you, Ben. This has been great. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. And um, please do feel free to stick around and we'll, we'll, we'll keep the conversation going. Um, so I'm going to stop the recording. And uh, again, great appreciation for your time and for the work you're doing. And um, hopefully the summit is a place not just for you to, um, you know, share what you have today, but perhaps to continue doing some of that seed planting. And what was the phrase you used at the beginning about collecting people? Oh, uh, collecting <laughs> interesting regenerative people. In the... <laughs> right. I think this might be a place where you could, uh, where, where maybe collectively that's what we're doing. Um, and uh, it is. Uh, what you want. hopefully you're, you'd be a part of that process too. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, uh, <laughs> It's a weird big interview. It's uh, <laughs> I'm not used to it. Uh, <laughs> much more used to yeah co-creation. Uh, but this is great. Thanks, Ben. Um, You're very well. I'm, I'm going to jump now. Uh, All right. Cheers. Later.